what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel I want to talk about something that is a new steering feature on these new super duties and it happens to be right here we're gonna talk about what trucks are coming with it what it even does and can you add it to the truck if you don't have it stay tuned and figure out what we got going on Welcome back. Hope everyone's doing well. So this is a topic that I've been meaning to cover and I've been noticing it more and more on these new Super Duties, 20 and up. I have not confirmed that 19s, 18s, or 17s have even had this. So I would say 20 and 21s. If anybody has a Super Duty, why don't you come to the wheel well in the driver's side and you're going to look for what looks to be like an aluminum colored bracket my truck has been undercoated and uh, it was covered over so you can see just barely a little aluminum but there is an aluminum bracket right here that goes up to a component under the hood so this little contraption on the steering shaft you guys can see barely down there definitely a little tighter on the diesel jobs I have a gasoline one I'm gonna show you here in a little bit but there is an, a steering assist motor on the steering shaft. Now you might ask yourself, well, why does that need to be there? Well, one, the trucks that are equipped with the pro trailer backup assist, when you're not using the steering wheel to control the front end movement of the vehicle, you use this little knob that I don't have. I do not have the Pro Trailer Backup Assist. If you had that, it would be mandatory that you have that power steering control module or motor, uh, there's two down there, um, uh, on your truck because that's what is going to turn the steering wheel via this control. So even though I don't have it, I still am trying to figure out uh, why I have it. Now my buddy who has a 2020. Uh, it is an STX model. He does not have that and you'll see his truck here in a little bit now I've gotten both of our window stickers and I put them side by side now obviously his being an STX And mine being a Lariat Ultimate You have to ask yourself. Well, is it a feature for? Uh, comfort and quality and it's just because of the trim level um, I have yet to determine that if anybody actually knows I tried uh, looking in the workshop manual in the parts catalog and it was being too new at the time uh, and it was having a hard time even looking up that part number I had actually got the engineering number tried cross-referencing it and it was like I was coming up with nothing and I asked myself a question if I needed that part on my truck how am I even gonna get it so I wound up just exhausting an hours or so worth of time uh, at the end of the day and I just, I was like, I can't figure it out. So I just kind of uh, gave up and was gonna ask all of you watching, what have you found being the reasoning on why some of these trucks have this and some do not? The only thing I can think of is because of the trim level and uh, options and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna show you a couple of other trucks Another diesel, like the one I was telling you, that did not have it. I'm going to show you a gasoline 7.3. You'll get way better visual of what I was actually trying to show you on mine. And lastly, we're going to go over, we're going to have a little uh, talk while we watch DS Trucks drive his 450 from the plant. We're actually going to get some lunch. So we're going to talk about uh, what that does what I am thinking it is also going to help, and I'm thinking you probably can't add that to your truck. All right, guys, let's check this next shot. All right, guys, and here is a 2020 uh, F350 with the 7.3. And this is what I'm talking about, this power steering control module. <laughs> this is used for vehicles that have the pro trailer backup assist so that knob that is underneath your 4x4 shift that knob 
utilizes this motor to turn the steering wheel. Now, on my Super Duty, I do not have the Pro Trailer Backup Assist, but I do have this. And I'm trying to figure out right now, what is the stipulation on how this comes on a Super Duty? Vehicles that do not have uh, Pro Trailer Backup Assist, I don't know what the uh, package that you would get on your Super Duty uh, would have. The, if you guys remember, uh, the 2020 Super Duty fuel filter replacement I did, he did not have one. Uh, he doesn't have Pro Trailer. I do not have Pro Trailer. I do not have adaptive steering. He does not have adaptive steering. It's something I want to talk about. This is something that is going to help with steering wheel oscillation and a whole bunch of other different stuff. We're going to get into that here in a little bit, but just preliminary inspections why don't you guys go out and see if you have this motor the indicative signs of that is actually through the wheel well and if you see this silver bracket or silver or aluminum you have the power steering control module so yeah let's familiarize ourselves with what that actually does why is it on here and what you guys can do to notice if you are equipped so here's a 2020 that does not have the power steering control module bracket you guys saw on my truck where it was and you can see the steering shaft, just a plain old turnbuckle style uh, U-joint that's in the steering shaft. But you guys can compare and contrast. Pay attention when you guys look at your Super Duties. Do you have this power steering control module bracket? And if you do, you may want to know a little more about how it works. And for those of you that want to continue on and go into a little more technical side of things, then just keep letting the video play. If not, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to drop by and hit that like and subscribe. So to carry on, right now the adaptive steering is the system that this is going to function in. And for those of you that do not know what the adaptive steering is or is new to this, I'm going to give you a quick overview and this is from the workshop manual so I'm going to read verbatim uh, what this is. It says the adaptive steering system provides steering assist to the driver by dynamically changing the steering ratio between the steering wheel and the road wheels thereby reducing the number of steering wheel turns required to turn the road wheels. This is accomplished through the use of a motor worm gear and a toothed hub. All adaptive steering system components are inside the steering wheel behind the driver airbag. So I'm going to actually put a link to the video that uh, I did replacing the heated steering wheel on an Aluma Duty and you guys can actually see the motor right back behind there, uh, actually behind the airbag. So to continue on with the electric power assisted steering system we have a bunch of components in there and the power steering control module is one of the big big things that controls the function of one the electric steering actuator which also communicates to all the other modules over the HS CAN 2 network and it's also uh, runs through the gateway module which we now call the DLC where we plug in our, our OBD2 uh, scan tool. So once all that is talking to activate that power steering actuator we have battery power, battery voltage going to it at all times and it is also uh, fed uh, power when it is in the run uh, with the key and just the uh, key in the on position. So in order for all that to, to work and communicate, we have to have all of our powers and our grounds and our communications uh, intact so that we have flawless uh, control over our electric power assisted steering. The main input 
for calculating the level of steering assist is done via the steering torque sensor and that is also integral to the steering wheel. The electronic steering actuator unit which is what we saw on the uh, steering shaft it is a reversible motor that applies steering assist by rotating the steering shaft and the little gear mechanisms inside that and you guys can see it is directly linked between the steering gear and the actual steering column which then goes into uh, you know the, uh, the firewall into the the passenger compartment so for the steering sensors once they all communicate to the power steering control module and everything uh, measuring the uh, relative rotation between the input and output shaft uh, they send signals that are pulse width modulated to the other modules within the power steering control EPASS system and once the power steering control module takes all of that data in it can then send out the amount of steering effort to that motor on the steering shaft when we have issues with this because there is an amount yeah, excuse me because there is a module attached we will get diagnostic trouble codes uh, stored in the power steering control module there is also uh, a kind of a fail-safe mode it states that when the steering actuator enters a hydraulic only steering mode no electrical steering assistance is provided when a concern considered to be critical safety is detected so if we have a problem with anything within the EPAS system it is going to default back to the hydraulic only steering mode the same steering that we've been had for for many many of years uh, except we are no longer going to have steering assist the the uh, function within the power steering control module has a feature that I think is going to help a lot with what we call the death wobble. This system has a PDC function or a PDC feature. It's a pull drift compensation. And this has got some really good info, and I'm going to read you verbatim what this says because this is kind of nailing uh, uh, the point home about what technically this is doing while we're driving. It goes on to say that the PDC fe feature assists drivers compensating for variation in road and driving conditions it's doing something and we're it's passively doing something and we're not even knowing this feature adjusts the power assist offset by reducing the steering wheel effort the input torque required to keep the vehicles traveling straight that is what we want we want that clear vision the PDC feature is automatically enabled at vehicle speeds above 25 miles an hour with sensors indicating the vehicles traveling straight. The PDC is designed to compensate for variations in road crown. That's a big deal. The system detects input torque to the wheel by the driver to slowly ramp in a steering assist, steering assist offset to neutralize in most situations and within limits steering efforts for the duration of time those driving conditions exist. Full compensation requires up to 45 seconds. Changing lanes on a multi-lane road and the expected change in road crown would trigger a change in torque input and a compensation adjustment and is a normal operation of the PDC feature. This feature updates automatically continuously 
However, since it is based on input torque, this feature only works with hands on the steering wheel while driving in a straight line. The system does not compensate when turning or during slight curves on highways. The system also does not compensate if driver input torque, steering wheel angle, or vehicle yaw rate is too large. So there is a lot of variations that, that it can work with and that it can, like it's not going to give us uh, this PDC feature when we are uh, lock to lock about to pull into a parking spot. No, this is going to be, you know, driving down the road nice and straight and it's indicating with with both hands on the steering wheel. Uh, one of the other things that our Super Duties have is this uh, lane departure warning. And if you guys look right in your center stack, you'll see the car in the middle with the dotted lines on the side. That is the lane departure warning. And it actually uses a camera we call the IPMA. We have an IPMB which controls all of our cameras, and then the IPMA, which is actually look right above your guys' mirror. You'll see like a little speaker vent cover thingy. Right behind that is actually a camera. And that is what is sensing our lane, uh, whether or not we are in between between the lines um, and it is to pretty much detect the road lane, mar the road lane markings. Um, this feature detects uh, unintentional drifting to one side or the other and then will alert the operator through the steering wheel actually vibrating. You guys can to, can feel that, that almost like your, your phone's going off. So it's kind of a cool feature if you guys haven't used it. Um, check it out. See if it's something you guys want to leave on. I mean, it, it is is definitely uh, uh, nice if you're going on a long trip uh, for those uh, that uh, maybe get tiresome. Um, one of the big, big things for the uh, power steering control module is that Pro Trailer Backup Assist. And you guys can go on YouTube and find some videos of people using the Pro Trailer Backup Assist uh, by not touching the steering wheel and just actually using that knob that I was showing you I don't have. Um, it is used, uh, I'm sorry, that system utilizes the power steering control module and in conjunction with other driver inputs it is going to steer the vehicle in the direction you want the trailer to go assuming you know your trailer has all the measurements loaded in and 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 so on and so forth um, it is a something I have not really used I've seen it uh, a co-worker <laughs> brought his uh, wife's vehicle in uh, it has it on the f-150 so so I got to see kind of what it was doing I got to see kind of what it was doing because um, I thought I thought it was kind of cool. I have never seen that before. So uh, I just wanted to touch on this. This is uh, something that I've been meaning to talk about. I didn't know what it was right off the rip uh, when I got my truck, and I did have to do some uh, research on it. Um, I still have yet to find uh, the reasoning on what uh, differs, whether or not somebody gets this uh, power steering control module set up uh, without the pro trailer backup assist so um, please do feel free if anybody knows that answer let me know so we can be educated um, and spread the the good uh, knowledge word around so without further ado tell me what you like about this in the comment section below if anybody has realized that they have it I'd be curious tell me what trim level you have tell me what kind of truck you got do you have it uh, do you actually know the difference between your 19 you had versus a 20 um, I'm really curious because uh, uh, I've only had a 20 and that's all I drive. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and make sure to hit that like and sub button. I'll catch you all next week. Thanks.